Hey, so uh, my name is Marshall Cottrell. I'm excited to uh, attempt to compress about two years of our journey in implementing open source culture at NASA into 20 minutes. Uh, so buckle up and let's get ready for launch. Uh, so a bit of background on MRI technologies. Uh, MRI is a, a woman-owned small business contractor for NASA. Um, we, uh, we, we are a 100% remote team located across four US states. The team started there in uh, Houston and we've slowly ex expanded out uh, to the entire southeast here. Uh, most of the work on the platform side is done by the four of us up there at the top, and a lot of application development done by the, uh, the guys there below. As early as 2014, we've been evangelizing the use of open source software. We were the first at JSC to deploy uh, Node.js in production, and we've been a long-term advocate of uh, the value of re repeatable deployments through containerization. You should also check out Blake's blog, uh, due to a physical disability, he does uh, a lot of his uh, programming on hands-free input devices, and I heard him uh, uh, type out verbally uh, a GraphQL query the other day, and it was one of the dopest things I think I've ever seen. Uh, so I don't have to talk to you guys too much about uh, what we do at NASA. You, you guys know what we do, but it's a particularly exciting time to be involved in the program. Um, Sid mentioned some uh, pretty cool updates coming to GitLab in 2023, but we're putting boots on the ground on the moon uh, in 2024. So definitely some ambitious projects uh, going on at the agency. Uh, that one's part, uh, powered by the Artemis uh, Lunar Exploration Program. And we're also seeing rapid commercialization of, of spaceflight in general, pioneered by companies like SpaceX. So you could say we've gotten pretty damn good at uh, 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 dictating hardware requirements, right? But like any large enterprise, uh, the agency struggles to digitize its process, modernize development, and promote knowledge sharing across uh, disparate teams. So what we were surprised with in particular is that NASA provides no tool chains at the agency level to support CICD uh, during development. Uh, w when we took a look, there were no existing uh, NASA cloud contracts with first-class support for deploying containers. So we went to our uh, provider of AWS, the East 2 contract, and said, hey, we'd really like to start deploying containers in this environment. What do you guys got for us? And they said, oh, no problem. Here's, a, here's an A gig EC2 instance. Have fun. And we said, no, you don't understand. We don't want to manage virtual machines anymore. And they said, great, yeah, uh, feel free to install the Docker daemon and manage all that yourselves. So we turned out to be the first team at JSC to deploy uh, containers to production, but we really weren't getting anywhere because, if anything, this was just adding overhead uh, both for our customers uh, and for ourselves in terms of operations. And what we found ultimately is that uh, by, by not owning any of this knowledge about the CI-CD process, about how these applications get deployed, by not requiring that as part of the software deliverables, NASA was really leaving itself open to abusive behavior by third-party contractors in that because they retain proprietary ownership of the knowledge of, of how to deploy and operate these solutions, it ended up being such that NASA is, is kind of beholden to these contractors long term and relies on them to operate the software that they've paid uh, to have written. So George Abbey was the director of Johnson Space Center between 1996 and 2001, and he was known for encouraging team building uh, events like the JSC uh, Chili Cookoff, uh, which kept expanding in scope. And he was attending one of these events, uh, came by, and saw that they were still doing all their uh, uh, judging and registration on pen and paper, he came by and complained that these were hardly the sophisticated tools that you'd expect to see at a NASA event. And this really uh, mirrored uh, our, our feelings and our philosophy towards CICD at the agency, right? We weren't impressed with what was out there, and we wanted to make things better. So in uh, September of 2019, our grant proposal was accepted to begin work on AppDAD, which is our uh, platform based on Kubernetes and GitLab. So AppDad is, is really the only platform at the agency uh, that's going on right now that's taking a totally fresh approach to application development and data science activities within the agency. We're collaboratively built and maintained, and fundamentally we enable digital transformation by changing the development culture within the agency. That's, that's really our goal. So we first took a step back and, and, and trying to identify what this platform needed to do. The first thing uh, that we wanted to support was empowering teams like ourselves that are capable of managing the end-to-end uh, -end, uh, life cycle of the workloads that they support. We wanted to put that in the, in the hands of capable teams. So instead of having formal handoffs between uh, you know, development and then operations and security, we wanted to provide an environment where 
uh, teams like us could, could fully support end-to-end -end the workloads that they manage. We also wanted to provide automation-centric single source of truth for, uh, platform for dev DevSecOps, that's obviously related. We also wanted to demonstrate and promote fully open, or fully open project management and collaboration. So we know uh, we're all accustomed to, you know, in the open source community, you can really identify the health of a project just simply by looking at the readme, making sure that the uh, CI/CD uh, pipeline boxes are all ticking green and whatnot, and you can really just get a feel for the health of the project just by seeing how that project is maintained. And it's also easy to go out and find reference implementations for things that you wanted to do. So we wanted to provide an environment where that was also true at NASA. We also wanted uh, a sandbox environment where you can prototype anything you want to with as few barriers to entry as possible, right? Just allow people to get started, have a full-blown CI-CD tool chain, and, and sort of like a, a Heroku-style place where they could uh, deploy these solutions and, and quickly iterate on them. We also wanted to create an API economy, eliminate data silos, and promote service reusability. You might be surprised there's actually no internal flight API uh, at NASA. So people end up solving these problems over and over again, and it results in a lot of manual data entry across lots of disparate systems. We also wanted to create uh, extensive platform, uh, extensible platform level NIST security controls so that applications hosted on our platform didn't have to go through the process of writing all the documentation around compliance and security. We wanted to provide a platform where 80% of the time, if you're not managing PII and you're not doing anything with like ITAR sensitive data, that you can just be compliant by default with no paperwork. We also wanted to be able to provide compute resources at or near uh, cloud provider costs. So what makes AppDAT successful? Uh, it's a collaborative effort. There's no authoritative corporate ownership of the platform or uh, any of its operations. So this is obviously a risky play for us being a small business. It's really easy for bigger contractors to come in and swoop in and sort of take over what we're trying to do. But we're trying to build a platform that extends beyond traditional contract boundaries. And so this is really the only way to do it. Um, we also are a completely grassroots movement. We've not received any agency level funding for this platform. It's been driven in entirely by our forward-leaning customers uh, and, and their requirements. We've seen a lot of interest from individual civil servant, developer, engineering, and research teams as well. We're built entirely on open source, which obviously means no, no vendor lock-in. There's no hidden costs as we start scaling this thing up to more and more users. And it's really easy to contribute to, right? You can bring up our entire stack on your local machine or bring up our entire stack in the cloud, and this allows people to contribute back to it really easily. Uh, we're exclusively cloud native, so we did intentionally did not concern ourselves at all with integration into existing legacy on-premise systems, and this provided us a very uh, clear path to success. We, we knew that we would be able to do all of our prototyping in the public cloud, and once we had the authority to do so, run that under the uh, agency GCP account with uh, very few configuration changes. It also runs entirely on Kubernetes, so all platform resources, all of our services, as well as all, all of our customer workloads are containerized and deployed in the same way. And this is critical to us as a, as a small business. We're able to operate a significant number of workloads at scale because we're using Kubernetes as, as the single control plane for everything. Uh, also, our, our emphasis here is on cultural change. We're, we're, despite the fact that we have an opinionated stack to sort of get people started with, we're not trying to enforce particular stacks on anybody. We're really uh, primarily focused on changing the culture at NASA. So first things first, what we're all here for is to talk about GitLab, of course. Uh, and, and we chose GitLab as sort of the core uh, core infrastructure for, for this project, primarily because it's open source and, and it's really easy for us to dig in and understand how GitLab works uh, and be able to contribute back and, and, and drive the requirements in that sense. The other thing is that the, uh, the Cloud Native Helm chart was entering its uh, alpha release, I believe, uh, right when we were getting started with this project, so it was clear that the direction and GitLab's focus on Kubernetes was going to well, be well aligned with our strategy going forward, too. The other big thing, and this relates to GitLab being open source, is that we were able to draw a lot of inspiration from GitLab's built-in uh, auto DevOps for Kubernetes, and we were able to tweak this uh, to support our own NASA-tailored implementations, and this was re really huge and really allowed us to get the uh, ball rolling quickly. The next big piece is Google Cloud. So AppDAT actually brings GCP, surprisingly enough, to the agency for production workloads for the very first time. Uh, obviously, we had a lot of data science teams throughout the agency that were particularly interested in the cloud-based ML and AI capabilities that are unique to GCP. Um, they also have best-in-class managed Kubernetes offering, GKE, of course. 
But most importantly, because this was not being operated, GCP was not being operated for the agency by any existing cloud contracts, we were able to really skirt the politics of the whole situation, define an environment the way we wanted it to be based on zero trust without you know, stepping on too many toes. So let's talk a little bit about security. As I mentioned, AppDat is based on zero trust, and I'm sure most of you in the room know what service mesh is and the capabilities that that provides. But essentially, we're able to enforce strong identity, authentication authorization, policy management, transparent TLS, encryption and termination. And for compliance reasons, we're able to maintain a full audit log of all network traffic uh, hitting all applications hosted on the platform. So this has been huge for us in terms uh, of compliance. Our current implementation is based on Istio because that was the most mature product in this space at the time we started, but as we all know, the, the doors have really been blown open recently and we're excited about the development in this space. The last piece is our custom API registry, uh, and like I said, we really wanted to promote service reusability, eliminate these data silos, and encourage people to build reusable APIs. Um, so our API, API registry enables that by uh, making external teams aware of existing APIs and their functionality. And the thing I wanted to hit on in particular here is that we're directly integrated with the Kubernetes API server uh, for dynamic service discovery. So you don't have to go and separately register your application with our API registry. Simply by deploying your service uh, uh, on Kubernetes, you're automatically integrated in the platform and we can automatically uh, show people documentation related to your API simply because it's deployed on the cluster. So just to kind of give you a, an idea of how all this stuff works, this is uh, uh, an example of one of the CRDs that we've implemented for an AppDAT service. You can see there's a little bit of GitLab project configuration there. You've got your host name, uh, the image you want to pull from. But importantly there at the bottom, we've got the open API spec uh, definition for your service. And we allow you to point either to an inline definition there or to an endpoint hosted uh, by your application, and this allows us to highlight and document uh, your service in the API registry. So as you can see, we, d we create all the Kubernetes resources we need to support your application, but then we also do a handful of other things, like, like I said, register your service definition in the API registry. Um, we provision OAuth client credentials in DEX within the cluster so that we can automatically handle end user authorization on your behalf. Uh, eventually, we're going to validate security and compliance documentation that's associated with the repo that you specified, so that we, way we can make sure that you've got all the paperwork in place in order to be compliant and take this thing to production. We also inject an open policy agent sidecar for uh, doing policy enforcement and traffic management. And this is nice because we're able to build that bundle in the API registry of what services should be able to talk to. Uh, what other services, and we're able to distribute these policy bundles uh, to all the, all, all the sidecars running in front of all the applications. And then finally, we configure GitLab monitoring via annotations on these, uh, uh, on these resources, and this allows us to still provide metrics uh, to, to, to the end developer, and they can monitor their solution uh, without having to uh, go into the Kubernetes cluster itself. Uh, so I wanted to spend uh, a bit of time talking about our development progress. So in phase zero, uh, we were just tasked with creating a cloud-native prototype platform in GCP. It was important for us to develop uh, operational expertise with, with Kubernetes and GitLab. We'd used Kubernetes for toy projects before, and we were pretty familiar with GitLab, but we had never operated it before. So we spent the majority of this phase just making sure that we knew what we were doing. Uh, we also had our initial ATO package development. This is just a bunch of documentation that NASA requires, your site security plan, continuous monitoring plan, uh, risk assessment report, all that sort of thing. The interesting thing there is that we're trying to distill these requirements down so that applications hosted on our platform don't have to go through this process anymore and can just be compliant by default just by running on, on our platform. Um, we also were running a fully managed multi-tenant GitLab instance running on Kubernetes deployed in a highly available configuration, but not geo-distributed. And as part of our phase zero deliver rules, we demonstrated the API registry and the service mesh and, and, and the principles of zero trust for end user and service to service authentication. Uh, phase one, which is the phase that we're currently in, we got our initial ATO approval so that we could officially operate this as a prototype environment on behalf of the agency. Um, and, and, uh, our, our goals in this phase are to scale up our multi -re scale up our GitLab deployment to be multi-region so that we can better support users across the country and have our initial NASA projects fully migrated running on the production platform. 
Hopefully, uh, next time you guys see me, this talk, uh, see me give this talk, I'll be talking about our expansion to mission control, edge Kubernetes, and other hybrid cloud use cases. So we've seen significant utilization of our GitLab instance just in the first year. And keep in mind, we're not even in production yet. This is still, the agency still considers this a prototype platform. But we've had 53 users, 74 projects across 15 groups, and almost 15,000 uh, GitLab CI jobs. I think the, the, the CI job metric really gives you an idea of, of uh, the utilization and, and how all this is, is really automation centric. So our NASA customers on AppDat. Uh, the STI program, Scientific and Technical Information, out of Langley Research Center, has been a huge advocate of us. Uh, they desired modernization, wanted tr to transition to a cloud-native uh, development platform, and were particularly interested in, in the cloud-based ML APIs uh, that GCP offers. So we're migrating 40 terabytes of public research content to the cloud on their behalf, and doing a combination of legacy migration and new application development to support NASA's future end-to-end -end dissemination platform uh, for scientific journals, papers. Actually, this very conference talk had to go through this program in order for, for me to disseminate it to you publicly. Uh, IRD Information Resources Directorate out of Johnson Space Center has tasked us with containerizing over 100 cold fusion business applications. If you remember back a, a few slides, uh, uh, George, George Abbey's uh, chili cook-off site uh, that, that he wanted those guys to di digitize is actually one of these uh, cold fusion applications that we're migrating to the cloud. So we've kind of come full circle in that sense. Um, we're also porting, it to the, uh, porting all these applications to the open source Lucy runtime because Adobe doesn't have very good licensing models around deploying containerized solutions. Um, and this customer was primarily motivated by cost savings opportunities of auto scaling in the cloud. A lot of these a uh, hundred or so business applications are used by a handful of users uh, n not frequently throughout the year. And so being able to scale things up and scale things down according to usage uh, really allows us to provide significant cost savings. Um, we were also able to leverage uh, custom auto DevOps templates to simplify this sort of large scale migration. So we've pretty much gotten it to the point where they can upload their source code we do a bunch of checks in CI to make sure that it's going to run uh, uh, correctly on the Lucy runtime, and we can kind of alert the developer to things that might be incompatibility issues uh, right there in the tooling. Uh, finally, uh, we've seen a lot of engagement and a lot of interest from research teams across all centers at the agency, and we're really trying to develop a GCP environment where these data scientists uh, across civil servants, university researchers, and contractors can easily collaborate in one environment, provision access to shared data resources, and spin up arbitrary compute to do analysis on this. Uh, so I can't talk about specific numbers, but we're projecting roughly order of magnitude cost savings uh, for all of our major NASA customers as a result of this platform. So obviously, most of this presentation has focused on our ground-based operations on Earth. Um, but, uh, like I mentioned, we're interested in deploying Kubernetes at the edge, and I really mean at the edge. Uh, so, we're, we're, uh, we're, we're in talks with the James Webb Space Telescope, SLS program, uh, and the Artemis program. Uh, NASA's interested in deploying a lunar, lunar uh, uh, data center on the moon, and we think Kubernetes makes a lot of sense as the uh, operational framework uh, to support uh, the eventual um, uh, development of these of these uh, um, colonies. So, I really appreciate it. Uh, I hope I, uh, I hope this was interest, interesting for everybody, and we're really excited about implementing open source culture at NASA. Thank you.